Okay, good evening. So tonight um, I'll be answering a question about meditation practice. But first I wanted to uh, revive an old activity that uh, I used to do and did sort of at the example of my teacher who used to do it and that is to uh, request uh, he didn't really request, he more like told us to do it but request meditators to talk about their their the benefits of the practice share them with others it's uh, something that can be quite inspiring if you're unsure or even unaware of the benefits of meditation practice it helps to make it a little more real to see other people like you going through the practice so I'd like to invite Galen to come and just say a few words <clears throat> The basic idea is, uh, before you started meditating, you know what you were like and how you were, what your feeling was. And after you've done quite a bit of meditation, especially the intensive, we're mo mostly interested in the intensive courses that you've done, um, how that changed the way you were and how you felt? Um, well, I think that, um, you know, it, it hasn't removed, my practice hasn't removed any of the, you know, sort of, uh, I guess, issues, I would say, that um, I've had over the years or things about myself that I haven't been able to accept very well or, or don't want to be um, part of my experience you know it hasn't gotten rid of any of that of course um, even though at times I may I may wish that it did um, but I think that it's definitely helped to um, kind of get less rutted when I'm going through things that I don't want to experience. And I would say specifically about the courses, especially after my first course, I remember um, feeling a lot of liberation in seeing things come and go, um, which, you know, it's obviously a very basic sort of thing, you know, in, in regular life things come and go as well. But I think really sitting, you know, sitting there and having absolutely nothing to distract yourself with and, I mean, it, it, it you can, you see like the moment when things come and go, you know, more or less, you might not be paying attention at that exact moment, but um, I think that really changes things and I think especially the fact that you don't have other things to go to, to distract yourself with, to, to move on with, to help you move on with. Um, I think that it, it's a really powerful thing to, to know that you can, you know, really just do nothing. Um, and in, in some sense, I think meditation is more doing nothing than, you know, just sitting there and, um, in another sense, maybe it's not, but um, of course you are kind of doing something. But um, so yeah, I think that I think that for me, seeing things come and go without distracting myself or, or doing anything really about it um, is is pretty powerful. And um, I definitely left that first retreat feeling that and and wanting to talk to you know, everybody that I knew, I, I tried not to get too preachy, but, um, but yeah, really wanting to, to tell people about my experience and try to influence others into giving it a try. Um, yeah, yeah, I think that's, that's about what I have to say.
Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So the question for tonight is in the general realm of the topic of bad things that happen due to meditation practice. So someone asks or comments about how meditation appears to make them well, they didn't phrase it quite like that. It was as a result, something like as a result of meditation, I find myself more selfish and annoyed by other people. And they're wondering if this is something, do they have to practice other types of meditation as well? Or is this something that will go away in time? So the first clear, quickest answer and, and something we have to be quite clear about is that it's not possible for bad things to come from meditation practice. But important, it's important to note that, or to qualify that by meditation practice we mean mindfulness. Certainly it's possible uh, for bad things to happen when you're sitting still with your eyes closed or walking back and forth. Certainly, because it hasn't said anything about how your mind is inclined. But through the practice of mindfulness, it's not possible for bad things to arise. So it's an interesting and important topic to discuss why, why it, it is that it appears to be that way. It appears that bad things are happening because you're mindful. It's making things worse. And so we've eliminated one option, that bad things happen that are caused by meditation, caused by mindfulness. There are three other options of regards to things that you think are bad and you think are caused by meditation practice. The first option is those things that you think that are bad that are caused by meditation practice, but they aren't bad and they aren't caused by meditation practice. Second option is things that you think that are bad. This is a very Buddhist sort of classification if you've ever read any of the suttas. Things that you think that are bad, uh, that are caused, you think that are bad, you think they're caused by meditation practice. They are bad, but they're not caused by meditation practice. And the third option, of course, things that you think that are bad, and you think they're caused by the meditation practice. And they're caused by the, where do we get? They're caused by the meditation practice, but they're not bad. Did I repeat myself? They're bad. They're not bad, they're not caused by meditation practice. They're bad, they're not caused by meditation practice. They're not bad, they're caused by meditation practice. There's no such thing that thing as things that are both bad and caused by meditation practice. And uh, regards to the quote question specifically, there's the third it's the third one. Or oh, it's one of them. I get myself confused. One of them is uh, touched upon by the actual specific question, but it's important to talk about all three. It's in relation to things that we think that are bad and we think are caused by meditation practice. It's a part of the struggle that goes on when we practice meditation. So those things that we think are bad, we think are caused by meditation, that are neither bad nor caused by meditation practice. This is a common and diverse uh, spread of phenomena. This refers to a lot of the bad things that we have in life that turn out to not be bad. And this is a big basic part of mindfulness practice is learning to change our perception about things. Um, most specifically, and really the only ones that are pertinent for meditation practice is impermanent suffering and non-self. And I've talked about this many times. There's, an, I think, a very important video I did. I mean, I, I did it because I thought it was an important topic to make clear, and I encourage people to watch it on um, the nature of reality. I think is the title. Uh, 
but it relates to those experiences we have, we think something's wrong, but nothing's wrong. And it's certainly not caused by meditation practice. Impermanence is not arising because of meditation practice, but it feels like that because our efforts are always constantly directed in life towards finding stability, permanence. And so we're disturbed and we think something's wrong, as we normally do when things are impermanent. But meditation practice, mindfulness, is not letting us avoid it. It's not taking us out of the impermanence into a state of stability. It's forcing us to learn to cope with instability and become accustomed or flexible in the face of instability, in the face of suffering, pain, stress, in the face of non-self, which means the uncontrollability or the instability. Uh, Insubstantial Insubstantiality of things When we're faced with this we think something's wrong Meditation can be quite painful And we think that's caused by meditation practice It can be quite stressful The mind feels chaotic And we think this meditation, something's wrong now, Even just watching the stomach We feel like we can't do it Because it's unpleasant sometimes Um Stuck, sometimes not moving But all, all in, in its entirety um, All of experience is not a problem There is no uh, experience that we could ever have that is a problem right? It's not our experiences, it's our reactions Problems come when we sequentialize when we create a chain of causation where we react and we react and react and we build up a reaction until it explodes and into action into doing something about it karma that's not what this person is referring to but it is an important uh, struggle that we have in meditation practice is learning to change the way we look at things from seeing pain as a problem seeing impermanence as a problem to learn to be flexible and, and adaptable and familiar with the vicissitudes of life, the potential for suffering and the fact that we can't control things so that instead of trying to control, we learn to see them just as they are. The second category, things, let's get these straight, things that are bad um, but are not caused by meditation practice. Let's do the other one first. Things that are not bad, but are caused by the meditation practice. We think they're bad, we think they're caused by the meditation practice. They are caused by the meditation practice, but they're not bad. Um, this, I think, is a smaller, an actually smaller subset of, of phenomena. Um, I think of a common one for meditators is the fear of letting go. Um, and it really only, these things really only come up in the beginning, because it's hard to imagine from our perspective, uh, something that you could perceive as bad that comes from the meditation practice, since the things that come, actually come from meditation, mindfulness practice are so good. But it, is, it does happen in the beginning, it can happen in the beginning, that as you begin to let go, it can be quite scary. Uh, you, you start to get afraid and concerned, and um, you feel like you don't know yourself even, huh? where is this leading? You read about, often read about in Buddhist texts or you hear a talk about letting go, not clinging to things and you think all these things that I like, all these things that I hold on to, I have to let them go. And of course that's not how it works, you, you can't be forced, you're never going to be forced artificially to let go because meditation isn't artificial, it's natural, it's about seeing the truth. And the truth, unfortunately, happens to be that the things you like, the things you want, are not actually going to make you happy. And wanting and liking them is only a cause for more stress and, and suffering. Uh, much more common is when others perceive in the meditator um, the changes. Because, of course... It's very hard for non-meditators to cope with change. And so even though the change might be neutral, any change of an individual is, is 
stressful, scary. But more importantly, a lot of the changes that meditators undergo are horrific. And, and even when they do understand and do perceive what's happened to the meditator correctly, they're, they're upset and displeased by the fact that the meditation or medita meditator is no longer um, exciting or excited or passionate, uh, no longer caught up in all the worldly pleasures that they are. And when this is family members or close friends, it can make meditators doubt what they're doing and be unsure, uh, at least in the beginning. I don't think it's a long-term concern, but it certainly can happen for meditators, people who do a little bit of meditation and find that uh, there's a conflict with their friends and family and others who are displeased and, un and unhappy about um, the changes that they're going through. But really of the things, as I said, that happen in meditation, more often it's, it's quite um, liberating and it should feel good what happens from, through the meditation practice. But the third category is the one that I think is of concern in this question. That is bad things that we think they're bad, we think they come from the meditation practice, they're bad, but they don't actually happen because we're meditating. So to understand this, it's a little bit difficult to understand. We have to understand the state of someone who doesn't meditate is always, always avoiding. There's a sense in which it's always avoiding uh, bad things. It may not always appear like that, or, or it's, an, it's an odd sort of phrasing, but from a Buddhist perspective, that's the, the key difference. We have this um, phrase, flight or f fight or flight. And whether you're fighting something or fleeing it, you're avoiding it. You're avoiding, from a perspective of someone who, from the perspective in opposition of, of the perspective of, of observing the phenomenon and being mindful of it, it, it's a sort of avoidance. And so building up those habits doesn't allow us often to appreciate um, first of all, appreciate the nature of our minds and understand them and, and be aware of the problems that are there. But second of all, it often doesn't allow them uh, to develop um, uninhibited, right? So what I mean by this is sometimes you get angry and you find a way to avoid the anger. Now, it's not a very healthy way of dealing with things, but... Um, it's it's easy and it is temporarily uh, feasible. You get angry and so you try to make yourself happy or you go away from the person that's making you unhappy. That's a good example because it actually is quite wholesome. Suppose you're angry with someone. Well, a good idea is to go off into your room and, and meditate, but just going off, going for a walk can be quite beneficial. Meditation doesn't let you do that. So there's two sides to this. One, when you meditate... Um, first of all, you're going to see lots of things about yourself that you didn't see before And second of all, some of the bad things that are there are going to have a chance An opportunity to present themselves and grow uninhibited because you're no longer avoiding them So just like a person who makes you angry when an experience makes you angry Sticking with it gives you an opportunity to get angry That's not a good thing But it's not caused by mindfulness It grows out of a sort of a, an in-between state where you're no longer where you're not yet being mindful of it but you're no longer trying to escape it so just sitting still and getting very angry or let's say bored of meditation or frustrated about meditation is really going to become a, a problematic thing um, once you've this person mentions um, the interactions they have with others and once you stop wanting to interact with others because of some preliminary insight into mindfulness you give you can give um, space to the annoyance the, the, the any a new sort of annoyance for people and that's not mindfulness by any means it's the opposite it's a reaction but you've taken away you've let your guard down or no in this case you've 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 
let go of the sort of the appeasing of your um, your defilements, which would be you know engaging in pleasant conversation or pleasant interactions with others. Um, but you don't have the level of mindfulness that allows you to just be with the experience. So when you're around people, you know, normally you could find a way to be pleased by that, engage with them. And when you don't do that, you instead go the opposite way and get, get uh, annoyed by them, you see. But it's not because of mindfulness, it's because you're doing some kind of... Um, Shell, you, you know, this shell of, of the meditation practice um, And so it gives the opportunity For the unpleasant emotions to rise All of these unpleasant things Like the annoyance towards others They're a part of you They have nothing to do with mindfulness They're not a product of being mindful But they have the opportunity to arise So, so first, bad things that you didn't see Will come up in meditation Absolutely, that's part of the process That's the Buddha acknowledges It's part of the realm of the objects to be mindful of. It's under dhammas, so uh, liking and disliking, uh, things like doubt, confusion, worry, fear. Worry is another big one. You might have never worried before you meditated about getting angry or, or clinging to things, right? When you cling, you just go for it. Now you find you're worrying about everything. You're afraid of everything. You have worries that, you, you know, before I was a very confident person. Now I'm worried about everything. It's not that worry is a good thing, but you've become aware of the badness of things and you're not yet able to to cope with or, or uh, overcome them or change the way you look at them so that you let go of them. And so you're reacting to the bad things in ways that you wouldn't have reacted before. Greed, okay, let's go get it. Anger, okay, let's fight. So you add worry in there. You add doubt. Doubt about what you're doing because you're doing something new. It's not because you're being mindful that you start to have doubt everything, but it's because you, you're doing something that you don't know the truth about. You, when you start to meditate, you're not sure, is it good, is it right? And so you give rise to doubt. So it's an impor important to, make, to not make the mistake of thinking that things like annoyance with others, that, that yeah, that's me being mindful and now I scoff at other people because of how worldly they are or so on. Absolutely not. A person who is mindful, who is truly mindful, should never be uh, disturbed by any evil in others. Any, I mean, by evil, I, I include everything, like just being annoying, for example, or you know, being worldly, talking about things that are useless, even holding wrong views. If someone starts to uh, say bad things about Buddhists or, or say evil things about other people and be mean and nasty. It should never bother one. The Buddha said when people even say bad things about Buddhism, if you get annoyed and upset about that, you're not following his teachings. You could never truly understand and know the truth of what they were saying. Um, and and much more important, when, when you realize this, or, or having that in mind, when you are annoyed by annoyed by things or when you find yourself clinging to things or whatever arises when you meditate it of course has to be an object of your meditation practice so you find meditation you say it's making you selfish and annoyed by others that should be op the object of mindfulness it's not because you're mindful that that's happening it's because you're not um, reacting to it or, or finding ways to avoid it right Normally, if we were ever to feel annoyed, we would, we would reprimand ourselves and say, okay, I should enjoy myself and appreciate these people and, and get involved in their conversations. I'm not saying you should never do that. In fact, another problem, another problem that's related is getting wrong ideas about meditation practice. Like suddenly you can't engage with other people, you have to act all stiff and rigid, and that's not true or proper either, I don't think. So meditators get the wrong idea about meditation. They become too, they become a meditator, you could say. And becoming anything, of course, is problematic because it's artificial and you get this idea in your mind that you create a personality about. 
and then there's acceptable and unacceptable and, and when the unacceptable happens you react, you get upset, you get annoyed. These people all are talking about worldly things, they shouldn't be doing that. I don't want to hear this and you get upset about it. No, rather when that happens you should say to yourself, annoyed, annoyed. And it's just a part of who you are. For some people that would never happen. Maybe for others it would be something else. They would find it hard to not get caught up. Often we find it hard not to get up and get caught up in useless talk because of our greed. Some people are full of greed, some people have more anger, some people have more delusion, so they just want to fight with people and argue with them and so on, that sort of thing. But either way, there's no such thing as bad things that happen because of mindfulness, not directly. So that's the answer to that question. I think it's an important topic. Thank you for asking. I wish you all the best. And thank you, Galen, for talking. <laughs>